Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and these are the Insta360 Link 2 series. We have the Link 2C and the Link 2. They're both AI-powered 4K webcams and will work with all of the latest features of macOS 15, and also have some of their own software you can use as well. They come in at 149 or 199 for the more advanced Link 2 that has a gimbal on top, but both offer a half-inch 4K sensor and mics that use AI to cancel background noise and more. Now we'll go ahead and unbox both of them, but we're going to take a closer look at the Link 2. So let's take the top off both of them. There we go. And see what we've got inside. So basically we have one that doesn't have a gimbal. So let me just open this quickly. We'll remove the cover here. So we have one that's not a gimbaled sort of camera, very compact, but again, a half inch sensor. It has a privacy shutter inside, so if you want to block the camera, you can. But with the gimbaled one that we're going to take a closer look at, well, let's take a look at that. We'll set this one aside, and we're going to focus on the one with the gimbal. So again, it says Superior Audio Awaits. We'll open it up here. So same sort of packaging, just a little wrap around there, and then a little piece at the bottom. You'll see we have USB-C at the back. We also have a little pogo pin connector. And then on the front, we've got what looks to be a microphone array at the top. And then on the front is the camera. Now we don't have a shutter here because it's automatic. It will turn off after about 10 seconds or so of inactivity. So you don't have to manage it and it just blocks the camera completely. If we set this aside, also contained in the box is a stand to go on the top of a MacBook or wherever you, else you'd like to place it. So it has a couple different adjustments there. And then also within the box, we have some paperwork, of course. Let's see what we've got, anything significant, some stickers. We've got a quick start guide. We also have a nice USB-C to USB-C cable, and then an adapter that's USB-A to USB-C. Now, before we take a look at this in more depth, Insta360 sponsored this video. They sent me this device to use, I get to keep it, and they don't have any input as far as the overall opinion of what I say about the device itself. I just wanted to do a simple overview of it and show you how it works, and we'll see together if it works better than maybe the built-in Mac camera. I would imagine it would having a half-inch sensor and taking up a larger space, but let's go ahead, we'll set it up and take a closer look. Now, by default, the camera is in privacy mode when it's turned off. I have the microphone disabled as well. Let's go into the Insta360 link controller and it will turn on. So I'll give it just a moment. It turns on, activates, and then we can actually control it like this. Now, because I have it pointed down, we can just move it up like this, move it back down, and you can control this in other ways as well. So maybe we want to use my phone to control it. We can go here to the phone controller, scan the QR code and it will connect. So let me go ahead and do that. We'll scan the QR code. So now it's connected and you can actually see the same controls on the screen. If I wanna move it this way or this way, I can up and down. We can also have it track just a single person or we can have it track a group of people. We have other options we'll go over in just a moment, but we can even zoom in and out as well. So you have all of these controls directly on your phone, or you can control them from this app. So let's take a look at the app here itself. Let's expand this. Now it doesn't look exactly framed perfect. So I sat back, it auto frames. If I hold my hand up, it will turn on tracking or turn it off. You can see that down at the bottom of the screen. Again, hold my hand up. You can zoom in by forming an L. You can do that if you wanna zoom, if you're way back. And then you can also use other gestures here. So if we go into our options in the upper right, we have the option for a whiteboard. If you wanna use a whiteboard, it will actually call that whiteboard out and try and find it within the screen, or you could set up a virtual whiteboard. We also have a bunch of different options here. So instead of using hand gestures, we can use AI tracking, it will frame me. We have that same thing here, a whiteboard a smart whiteboard, and even a desk view. So if we go into desk view, give it just a moment, it will tilt down. You can see my keyboard, the back of my microphone, and if maybe I wanna bring in my iPhone, you can see the desk view wherever you are. So the higher up the camera is, of course, the better this will be, but it even corrects the sort of overall bending of the screen and display, and I could show you my iPhone and it looks normal. So if I wanted to show something on my desk, I could. Back out of desk mode, you'll see it tilts back up on its own, and we're good to go. 
Now with that privacy mode, we have the option here to mute it in privacy, as I mentioned before, and then we have additional options here on the side. So here on the left, we have the option for 4k 30, 1080p 30, 720p 30, or portrait resolution and high frame rate. So I'll show you that in a moment as it has to reboot the actual camera to do that. Now, as far as tracking goes, it's pretty good as I showed you before. So if I move around, you can actually see it move. So if I back up here, let me back up and then I'll stand up and you'll see it will tilt and actually track. So if I want to do this, it will sense that and track and zoom right in and frame me properly. So now it's tracking. If I move over here, you'll see it move. If I move back this way, Again, it will move and just track me within the frame wherever I am. So if I move closer or if I move way back, it will continue to track me. If I need it to zoom in, you can do this and it will zoom in if you're not in AI tracking. So it works really well. So let's bring this back in and it will continue to track all the way up until I get to the point here. One thing that was a little unexpected is how well it actually performed at night. I was playing around with it a little bit last night and you can see what it looked like here. The only thing lighting my face is a monitor. Other than that, there are no other lights on in the room and it does a great job. So if you wanted to have it on a monitor, turn the brightness up, jump on a, maybe a call, you'll actually have pretty good lighting. We also have a bunch of effects we can enable. Now by itself, it actually has pretty good bokeh or background blur. And if I bring in the phone, so let me turn off the AI tracking here. If I bring in the phone, you'll see it actually focuses to the phone and we have pretty good tracking. So I can bring it pretty close here and it continues to focus. So you'll see the blur on the outside edge. If I bring it back, I want to show maybe a product, bring in a phone, maybe bring in an Apple watch. We can do the same thing. So it will focus on that just like you would expect super smooth and pretty much as good as the DSLR or mirrorless camera that I use. Now we have a bunch of effects here as well. So we can adjust things such as exposure, autofocus, of course, and temperature, but we also have background. So we can blur the background and it's using AI to sort of cut out around my head, like portrait mode. You've got bokeh, just natural bokeh. We can dial in the intensity if we want and also change the background. So it does a pretty good job, but around hair, it's a little bit difficult and that's true for just about anything. But if we want to change between different modes, we can do that. Maybe change the background to this whatever we want, or pick a picture that you want. You want a different photo, you can put it in the background or just turn it off altogether. We also have different filters. If you want maybe portrait or give it a second here, you want daylight. It takes just a moment to enable, but you can filter this however you want and use any one of these presets and they also work pretty well. Now the microphone is going to be super important. There's actually a few different modes here. If we go under more and then we go to audio mode, we have voice focus, which will focus our voice, voice suppression if you're in a very noisy environment, maybe an office or workspace, or it could be just a cafe or somewhere else. It will sort of limit that background noise. And then we have music balance. So if music is playing in the background, you continue to let that play, but it will still sort of pull out your voice so you can be heard by whoever you're talking to. So let me go ahead and switch the camera over to recording directly from here and we'll see how it compares from this to maybe the Mac camera as well. So now we're recording from the Insta360 itself. I can use all of the different gestures. I can move over here as I showed before where it will track me. And of course I have the different voice modes that we talked about. Those voice modes should work pretty well, especially if you're maybe in a noisy environment. So this gives you an idea of what the voice suppression mode is, but this isn't really that noisy of an environment since it's in a studio. And then of course we have music balance, but there's no music playing, of course, because of different things with copyright and more. So in general, we have that option, but if we go to voice focus, this is probably what I would use the most if I was at home. And then I'm just talking using voice focus. Now, again, if I wanted to put it into privacy mode, I just go ahead and turn it down like this, bring it back up. Now I'm being tracked right away. Again, I'll go right into AI tracking, enable it, and we're back to where we started. Again, I can show you the different effects in the background, blur the background, change the environment, or whatever I prefer. Now let's see what the overall Mac looks like with its microphone and its camera and see how it compares. Now we're using the MacBook Air camera as well as the studio mics, and this is in the normal voice mode. So this gives you an idea of what it looks like and sounds like, again, with the sort of portrait blur that we have on. Let me go ahead and switch it to a different mic mode. This is now voice isolation. This is what's built into the Mac itself. So it gives you an idea of the quality between this and the Insta360 Link 2. I definitely think, at least from what I can see on this display, that the Link 2 looks much, much better, has much better detail and, and overall quality 
but let me know what you think in the comments below as this is the first time sort of comparing them but just from what i see on the screen i think the link 2 looks significantly better this is the macbook air camera and its standard microphone to give you an idea of what it looks like in the same exact environment as the insta 360 link 2. This is the Insta360 Link 2 to give you an idea of the video quality and the microphone quality in standard mode compared to the MacBook Air. As I mentioned before, we do have the portrait mode, so let's go ahead and enable that and try it out. We'll just go here, go to portrait resolution and high frame rate. You'll see we can place it on a tripod and then put it in portrait mode. So we'll tap confirm, it will reboot the camera. So now we're in portrait mode and it will track just like it does in landscape mode. If I move over here, it will turn and track. We can also put it in privacy mode, just like we could before bring it back, and it works with all the major conferencing software, such as Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Skype, and others. So it should work on just about all of the major ones out there. As I mentioned before, it has a privacy mode, just sort of tilt it down, hold it for a second, and it shuts off. It says taking a break, we'll be back soon, and the microphone is on mute. You wanna bring it back, just tilt it back up, and now we're back. It will also automatically go into privacy mode. So if we close this application here, give it a moment, the light turns off on the camera and give it a few seconds and it will actually tilt down and automatically enter privacy mode as I mentioned before. So there we go. And now we're back into privacy mode. With the Link 2C, you also have a privacy mode. Just flip the shutter down and it completely blocks the camera. So that's it for the Insta360 Link 2. I'd love to hear what you think about it in the comments below as far as the overall microphone quality and camera quality compared to the camera as well. Now, of course, there's also the Link 2C that I mentioned earlier, if you don't need all of the gimbal. And also, if you're interested in checking out more about the Insta360 Link 2 and Link 2C, be sure to check the link in the description below to discover how both of these AI-powered 4K webcams can enhance your video quality and experience. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.